Welcome to the Steve Ames Show with guitarist Sandy Renda, pianist Mike Yanuzzi, and my special guest, entertainer Uncle Floyd. And now, on with the show. If you want to be a top banana, you've got to start at the bottom of the bunch. You got to know the joke about the farmer's daughter and take it in the kisser with the soda water. If you want to be a burlesque comic, basic training for you to take a punch. You got to roll your eyes and make a funny face. Then do a take and holler, this must be the place. If you want to be a top banana, you got to start from the bottom up. If you want to be a top banana, you've got to start at the bottom of the bunch. You got to know the joke about the farmer's daughter and take it in the kisser with the soda water. If you want to be a burlesque comic, basic training for you to take a punch. You got to roll your eyes and make a funny face. Then do a take and holler, this must be the place. If you want to be a top banana, you got to start from the bottom up. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Top Banana, written by Johnny Mercer for the Broadway show Top Banana, starring Phil Silvers. And right now, I'd like you to meet the two musical bananas at the keyboard, Mike Yanuzzi. <laughs> at the guitar, Sandy Renda. And tonight is a very, very special occasion for me and everybody here connected with the Steve Ames Show, because tonight, Believe it or not, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Steve Ames Show tonight. We went on the air exactly 20 years ago, Election Day 1990. And here we are 20 years later, still going strong. And coincidentally, not only is this our 20th anniversary, but it's also our 220th episode. So what better way to celebrate our anniversary with this beautiful song written by Dave Franklin and Al Dubin. Tell me I may always dance the anniversary waltz with you. is real romance an anniversary dream come true let this be the anthem to our future years to millions of smiles and a few little tears may I always mm, listen to the anniversary waltz with you.
Sandy, Randa, Steve. Mike. Steve, how are you? Yeah. Thank you so much for helping me celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Steve Ames Show. Wow. And I'm proud to say that you two fellows have been with me for 11 of those 20 years. Let's hear it for wow. Steve. Mike, they deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. And I do want to mention some of the great people we've had in the past when we first began the show. Our musical director was my longtime partner, Yolanda Peter Paul. Yep. And then came the maestro, Marvin Lewis. And then came the joyful one, Joy Kay, followed by Charmin Howe. And we're showing a picture now of Charmin with our longtime announcer and talent coordinator, Walt Gollander. And then came Andy Wall, the music man. And since 1999, Sandy Renda and Mike Yanuzzi. And I'm wow. so happy to be affiliated with both of you wonderful musicians. And Sandy, tell me, what is your special number for tonight? Uh, Perdido, a nice uh, a swing jitterbug and feel from the, from the old the Press Prado, I believe, uh, made that very popular. That's a Real swing good number. Real uh, good dancing number, yeah. Very good. Let's hear it for Sandy and Mike. Our very special guest this evening was my first guest on the first episode of the Steve Ames Show exactly 20 years ago. And he's back tonight to help me celebrate. He's a very good friend, and he's also an entertainer, singer, comedian, ragtime pianist, and cable television pioneer. Here is the one and only Uncle Floyd. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you, Steve, and uh, congratulations on your 20th anniversary. My goodness. I'm going to sit right down and write myself a letter. Make believe it came from you. Gonna write words all so sweet. They're gonna knock me off my feet. Kisses at the bottom. I'll be glad I got them. Gonna smile and say, I hope you're feeling better. Close with love the way I always do. Gonna sit right down and write myself a letter and make believe it came from you. Here's another one I didn't write. Oh, I can't give you anything but love, baby. 
That's the only thing I have plenty of. Baby, dream a while. You know, the other night I was singing this. Somebody said, you're too close to the mic. I said, how far should I be? He said, have you got a car? Happiness and I guess all the things that you hoped and dreamed for. Gee, I'd like to say you're looking swell. I was singing a song the other night. Someone said, your voice reminds me of a statue in Egypt. I said, Sphinx. He said, that's close enough. These are from burlesque. Till that lucky day you know darn well, baby, I can't give you anything but love. More? You want more? Oh, I don't know how many I get. This is like, this is, a, I waited my whole career to be here. I remember these trees when Steve planted them. You know, he had a chicken farm years ago. He planted chickens, but they didn't live. They Here's a song I sang to my wife on our honeymoon night. Oh, please release me. Let me go. My favorite song, my favorite song of all time. Can I do my favorite song? Unforgettable. <laughs> my second favorite song. Try to remember. Da, da. down to get you in a taxi honey you better be ready by half past eight oh honey don't be late i want to be there when the band starts playing remember when we get there honey two steps gonna have them all i don't remember eating that when they play those jelly roll blues i'll never eat broccoli rob before i come to the studio again tomorrow night at the dark town strutters ball Everybody! I'm gonna dance out both my shoes when they play those jelly roll blues. Tomorrow night at the Darktown Strutters Ball. That's it. Floyd Vavino, my good friend. Steve, you're the best. Thank you Steve so Ames. much. People don't last on television for two days, two episodes. Uh, Five years, two years, 20 years. 20 years, I'm very proud of it. And uh, it was all because of you being my first guest because you were on the pilot episode and they liked it. And I think one of the reasons they liked it is because you were my guest. So I thank you for that. Uh, people uh, have asked me why, <laughs> but uh, we did it anyway. No, and you've, now you're on your way to, you gotta go after Joe Franklin's record. You gotta go another right. 20 years and you'll be 40. That's correct. And yeah, I wanna be right. your guest on 40 years. That's right. Now you, I introduced you as a cable television pioneer mm. because you were just about the first host a variety why and why comedy. Why is Sandy laughing? I don't know. He's a happy man. But Sandy, Arenda, and Mike and Uzi and, and I, we love doing what we do. But how long were you doing uh, cable TV with the Uncle Floyd too show? Too long. Too long. You started, what, in the When 70s? I did my final show, I was the last one left watching. <laughs> but I started in burlesque. I'm very proud of that when it was burlesque. And you, you started off with Top Banana here, very right. appropriate. Phil Silvers. Because New Jersey kept had uh, the most burlesque theaters at one point. Uh, well, Ohio had the most, and then New Jersey was second in the late 19, well, 1957, 58. You had the Empire on Washington Street in Newark. You had the Minsky's Adams, the Adams Theater, which was Minsky's. Uh, 2,700 seats, one of the biggest theaters in the state on Brantford Place. The uh, Asbury Park had the Savoy Theater. Uh, Atlantic City had the Globe. Right. Still had the Globe, and then they had the, the Capitol and uh, 
and they got the axe from the, the circuit, came in from Philadelphia. It was a big business. It was really wonderful. And I was still in it with the very tail end of it, the dying embers of, of that art form. Well, now, the heyday of burlesque, of course, is the 20s, the 30s. Well, yeah, if you want to talk about the, the, the musical comedy theater of Burt Lahr and the grand shows, that was the 20s and 30s. And Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello on. were with Minsky's. Yeah, they, they played in, in, in the 1930s. They, they, it's it's argue, argue, argued all the time as to where they met. It was probably the Oxford Theater in Brooklyn, but they like to say it was the Apollo on 42nd Street or Minsky's. But uh, Lou Costello was working alone. Abbott's family were circus people. Right. His mother was a bareback rider. The father was an advanced man for Ringling Brothers. And he was a box office manager but Abbott, in, in right. burlesque, which was the most trusted job because he took all the money in from the, uh, and then they had to bring that to the producer and pay everybody. That's why there's an intermission in show business. The acts got paid during intermission. If they didn't get paid, there was no second half. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and they used to be I the candy barker, too. The candy burlesque. butcher. The candy butcher. The candy right. butcher sold candy and, that, and, and tricks and things, and it all was part of the thing. They sold advertisement on the, the oleos, on the walls. Uh, Eat at Joe's Restaurant, uh, Max the Tailor, whatever. They, they sold, everything was for sale. What year did you enter burlesque? 1968. It was in the very dying days. I was doing a show in New York for $35 a week. Uh, Jimmy Shine, uh, Murray Shishkel's musical of a play, and, and a $35 a week then. My rent was $20 a week on, on West 76th Street. And I saw an ad in the paper. They were hiring burlesque comics for 400 a week. That's good. So I went right in when I said, heck with this. I'm not doing legitimate work anymore. I went right into variety, and, and, and it was dying fast, though. And I got the job then. I was making more money than my father. <laughs> and were there any of the old-time burlesque yeah. comics still in the troupe? Joey Faye, Charlie Naples, a lot of names that don't mean anything today. Max, I remember Joey Faye. Joey yeah. Faye was great. Maxie Furman, uh, Steve Mills, uh, Charlie Con Harry, Harry Conley. Charlie, uh, Charlie Con Harry Conley was one of my favorites. And I got to work with a lot of these guys. They were all in their 70s and 80s. And Do you I remember three. some of the routines you did? I remember them. all of them. I, <laughs> I, well, th there's variations of them, but we basically did the same. Joey uh, claimed he wrote Flugel Street. We all did Crazy House. We did Meet Me Around the Corner. They were glorious shows, but it was dying then. All my friends were in Woodstock. All my friends were into um, the Beatles. I was out of sync with time. I was from another time. Like I, me? I, I love that we are time travelers. We're not That's slaves to the clock. Right. We don't believe in calendars or clocks. We live like we want. And who's to say what's old? Beethoven is old. Nobody. Right. Uh, Bach is old. Wagner. These people are before burlesque and vaudeville. That's right. And what year did you begin the Uncle Floyd show on TV? January 29th, 1974. 74. I remember yeah. watching you. And you were on for at least 25 years. I was on until till April of 01. I was down at that time only to Bergen, Passaic, and Morris County. And then I says, I've outlasted the audience. I, <laughs> I did it as long as... See, there's two theories in this world. You get out at the top or you stay to the very end. I'm one of those people who like to stay to the very end. Right. I don't believe in that get out at the top. Get Last out and do one what? at the go party, go, right? What was I going to do? I, I was broke anyway. I didn't have much money. I, what was I going to do? Go work in A&P? So you did 27 years of television. Yeah, and I paid it. But it was, it was uh, uh, you know, we made money. We paid the station. I sold the ads, and I paid the cast and crew. And How we, many episodes would you say you did? You did a lot. The guys claim we did 6,000. Wow. That's amazing. Well, Monday through Friday, strip time. Uh, 20 years at 200 is, uh, it starts to add up. It does. That was amazing. Because we were on Monday through, we had no material, so we had to do it every day to keep the audience interest. And you had a great cast of characters, yeah. plus Oogie the Puppet. If I was smart, I would have done generic shows and saved them and banked them, done 30 or 40 episodes and had something. to. Sh but now, all my shows, pieces of them survive, and I have a warehouse uh, with 360 shows, but... They're obsolete. It's, you know, jokes about Bon Jovi, things about, uh, that don't make sense today. But here's one thing that never goes out of style, mm. the songs, oh. these great standard songs, but that you play and sing so well and that I love to do. How about we do a couple of duets? I'm ready. There may be streets that have their sorrow, a smile today, a tear tomorrow. But there's one street that lives in glory It always tells the same old story Don't bring a frown to old Broadway You got a clown on Broadway 
Your troubles there are out of style Cause Broadway always wears a smile A million hearts, they flicker there A million lights, be quicker there No skies are gray on the great white way That's a Broadway melody Thank you, Broadway Melody. From, from what show? That was from the Broadway Melody of 1929. And who sang it? Charlie King. Very good. An MGM movie, by the way. No. Talking about movies, Floyd, how yeah. about giving us the theme song from Casablanca? Casablanca. This day and age we're living in gives cause for apprehension with speed and new invention and things like third dimension yet get a trifle weary with mr einstein's theory we must learn to relax learn to relieve the tension no matter what the progress or what may yet be proved the simple facts of life are such they cannot be removed you must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply as time goes by. And when two lovers woo, they still say I love you. On that you can rely No matter what the future brings As time goes by Moonlight and love songs Never out of date Hearts full of passion Jealousy and hate Woman needs man, and man must have his mate that no one can deny. It's still the same old story, a fight for love and glory, a case of do or die. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Floyd. Who sang it in the movie? I Dooley know you, Wilson. You got it. You know, I can't stump you. Dooley Wilson. Now we go from the movies to vaudeville. vaudeville. And let's close with a song that Eddie Cantor used to sing, a little Italian number. Oh, you yeah. know the one I mean. Josephine and Joe were so in love. So much in love, so very, 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 very much in love. Why in the hall for hours they would stay? When Josephine come in, she'd hear her mother say, Josephine, please no lean on the bell. When you smooch, please no push on the bell. I heard Mrs. Caruso telling Mrs. O'Flynn, Somebody keep ringing, but nobody come in. You can squeeze all you please, that's all right. Don't you keep us from sleep every night. When you make love in the hall, stay away from the wall. Josephina, please no Lena on the bell. When you're coming from work and you wanted the sub, I'm a cookie, you nice macaroni. Did you make it get up and you make it sit down for your fella, he calling the phony. You go to the park, you sit in the dark, you make what they call the pet. It's lipstick there and lipstick there, you don't get it from me to spaghetti. You say goodnight at 11 o'clock, it's a what a good girl should do. But you stay too long when you say goodnight, you don't finish till half past two. Why not get to marriage and raise a family and make you a promise I keep? I pay for the rent and pay for the other food and we all can get some sleep. Josephina, please no Lena on the bell. When you smooch, please no push on the bell. I heard Mrs. Caruso telling Mrs. O'Flynn, somebody keep ringing, but nobody come in. You can squeeze all you please, that's all right. Don't you keep us from sleep every night. Why, you could have so much fun with that son of a gun. Josephina, please no Lena on the bell. Thank you, Uncle Floyd, my
my good friend. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Let's hear it for Floyd. I want to thank Uncle Floyd, Sandy Renda, Mike Yanuzzi, and our producer director, Jerry Schoenthal, who's been with us for the entire 20 years. Let's hear it for everybody. And most of all, I want to thank all of you in the audience for making these 20 years so very special. And I do hope that the next 20 years will be just as much fun. So until next time, folks, remember. Thanks a million, a million thanks to you for everything an audience can bring you brought me. For every melody that I've sung tonight, just singing for you has been my delight. And so I'm saying thanks a million. And now a fond adieu. We've had a ball, but now that's all. Our show is through. You've made a million dreams come true. And so I'm saying thanks a million. Good night. <laughs>